Shalom, shalom, Israel, Most High Christ bless. I'm Kathy Yadon, and to my left. Shalom, shalom, Officer Bankanaya. So, with today's 15 minutes with the captain is going to be called, the topic is, clock in, you're hired. All right? Clock in, you are hired. All right? So, what are we hired to do? We're hired to do the work of the Most High. We're hired to do an amazing work. All right? Let's go to uh, Matthew 22 and 14. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see that? It says, many are called, but few are chosen. All right? The Lord, did, the Most High God chose us, all right, to do an amazing work. All right? He chose us, and did, what did he do? He called us. He called us out of the world, out of sin, out of iniquity, out of foolishness. And called us to make sure that we put our hand to the plow. All right. Let's go to um, uh, Romans, uh, uh, the 12th chapter. All right. Because we're talking about being called to be a holy people. But what are we called to do? How are we called to move? Read what you got. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business. You see what the Lord doesn't want us to be? Not slothful in business. Because whose business is this? Hold that. Let's go to Luke 2 and 49. We're going to come right back here. It says, not slothful in business. Read what you got. This is the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 49. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Was ye not that I must be about my father's business? So you telling me the heavenly father got a business? Yeah. It's called the 12 tribes of Israel being woke up, all right? And we all that's keeping these commandments, striving to get the kingdom, we all are a part of this, all right? So let's go back to where we're at in Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business. You see what the Lord said? Not slothful in business. Come on. Fervent in spirit. You see that? Fervent in spirit. That's why when you read uh, Revelation 3, it says... Uh, 3 right around 15 16 says I would rather that you would have been hot or cold but because you're lukewarm I'm gonna spew you out so that's why the Lord wants us to be fervent it wants us to be hot for this truth all right so now um let's go to um did I miss something right there serving the Lord there we go serving the Lord serving the Lord I'm glad you didn't let me miss that because that's the point being a servant all right providing a service at a business all right so um let's go to um luke 17 and 20. luke chapter 17 verse 20. this is the book of luke chapter 17 verse 20. and when he was demanded of the pharisees when the kingdom of god should come he answered them and said the kingdom of god cometh not with observation you see that the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You know what that means? When you're at work, you don't stand around. You make sure you got something in your hand, you working, you being productive, because what? You want Esau's time. Well, even if you work for yourself, you still wasting your time if you're not being productive. So what's that showing you? The same way we do on this earth, we must do for the Lord. We must always have something on our hand. We must always be doing something for the Most High. Come on. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Don't look for nobody else to do it. Don't look for somebody. Don't make an excuse when it comes to doing the Lord's work. All right? Come on. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You see that? The kingdom of God is within you. Meaning what? When you're ready for it, when you put your hand to the plow, the kingdom of God will be made manifest. All right. So now let's go to um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren. You see that? Many are called. He says, For you see your calling, brethren. Come on. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, 
not many noble are called. You see that? He says, not many wise men, not, not, not many noble are called. Come on. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You see that? The Lord ain't choose the geniuses of the world to bring out these scriptures. The Lord ain't choose the most noble men that's known and notoriety and fame all over the planet Earth. He chose the most what? What did the Bible say? He chose what? But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You see that? The Lord, remember they, they said, Christ, he said, of Nazareth? Ain't his son, yeah. a, ain't his father the carpenter? Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, ain't nothing good come out of Nazareth. Right, right. So what is that showing you? That what? Our forefathers were diligent men, but they didn't have to be. They weren't noble men. Not all of them was uh, known all over the whole uh, provinces and so on and so forth. All right? So the Lord is choosing us in these last days to show his power. That's why we're being chosen. All right? Continue. And God had chosen the weak things of the world. To, That's us. Come on. To confound the things which are mighty. You see that? What's mighty? Mighty. Christianity. Hmm. Mus uh, uh, Islam, right. all these different strong religions. Christianity covered the world ten times over. All right, but now what are we doing? We're taking that mustard seed that Christ gave us and spreading it across the whole planet Earth, and it's growing to be that bountiful plant. Come on, and base things of the world. That we're the base things. They call us that we were colored Negroes. That every name in the book except the children of Israel. We the base things. We're the, they call us the minority. Mm -hmm. But we are the majority because when you read Hosea 1 and 10, it says that what? We're numbered as the sand of the sea. Come on. And things which are despised had God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. You see that? Things that are not. He said uh, base things. He said he chosen us. Despised things he chosen us. Not noble people, mm -hmm. all right? Not noble, uh, famous people. He said, look, I chose these people to uproot what's being taught in the earth and overthrow it to be able to show my true power, right? All right? So now, let's go to um, uh, 1 Corinthians 9 real quick. 1 Corinthians 9, and I want 16. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 16. For though I preach the gospel. You see that? We've been hired to teach the gospel, right? Come on. I have nothing to glory of. You see that? This isn't about us, all right? This isn't about no man, no. This is about the gospel being taught to the 12 tribes of Israel, the good news. Come on. For necessity is laid upon me. You see that? This is a job that you cannot quit. This is a job that you are not allowed to quit. Come on. You yeah. gonna get fired, really. You gonna get fired. Come on. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You see that? You, you gonna feel fire and brimstone if you don't teach the gospel. Come on. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. You see that? So that's showing you the most I can look into our spirits and know if we're doing it willingly. He says, I have a reward. Because some brothers come in here and do it for their wife. Mm -hmm. Some brothers come in here to do it for fame. Mm -hmm. Some brothers come in here for fortune. The Lord said, if I do this willingly, come on. But if against my will. You see that? But if you do it against my will, come on. A disposition of, a go of the gospel is committed unto me. You see that? A dispensation of yeah. the gospel is committed unto me. Meaning what? You did it for no reason. Now the Lord knows that you did it for the wrong reasons, so you're not going to get the kingdom. So that's why we have to be very, very careful when you make it sure that you're serving the Lord with joyfulness and gladness, with a willing spirit, all right? Uh, the commandments are not grievous, brothers and sisters, all right? So now, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. We're touching on a very, very strong topic that must be adhered to very, very carefully. In these last days, it's very important that we understand how, how to get the kingdom, and it's going to happen through your labor. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. 
Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth. You see that? The Lord said, don't worry about these things that are going to come and go. All right? Solomon said, vanity is vanities. Come on. Where moth and rust doeth corrupt. You see that? So all these treasures and savings and so on and so forth, these things are only a defense on this side to make sure that we're able to sustain ourselves in this captivity. Come on. And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. So how do you get paid in heaven? How are you laying up your treasure in heaven? You making sure that you putting your hand to the plow because the scriptures say a, a workman's worthy of his hire. So the most high called you in this to work for him, to do work at his business, not to be slothful, to be fervent. You must make sure that your hand is on the plow Make sure your hands is never empty. Making sure that you putting your hand on every work that you can. Come on. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. You see that? No one can steal the kingdom from you. That's why you have to stay diligent and find your way to put your brick in. All right? Uh, let's go to... Um, uh, Psalms 94 and 16. All right. Psalms 94 and 16. So along with uh, being hired onto the Most High's company, the Most High's business, doing the Most High's business, you have to stand at a defense. And that's where, that's where when trials come, where people that come to work and get distracted, you step up to the plate and make sure that the mission is continued to push forward. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 94 verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Uh -huh. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You see that? The Lord said, who will rise up for me? Who's going to step up to the plate and make sure everybody's focused on the mission? Who's going to make sure that as distractions might happen, that the leaders are stepping up and saying, stop. Do not be focused on those distractions. Make sure the work is still getting done. So that's what the Lord wants in these last days. Read that part again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Come on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You see that? Who will rise up with me and stand strong to make sure that the work is still continue to get done? You got to ask yourself, are you that brother? Are you that sister? Because guess what? Sisters got to put in a brick too. You've been called as well. Mm -hmm. Whether it's making 11 bread, helping out among, uh, among the school with your different gifts and talents. Whether it's uh, helping with different benefits that help us to be able to further this truth. Our sisters put in a major brick in this. That's why Christ reverenced her, our sister in Matthew 26. So that's why it's very important in these last days that everybody who has been called and is pushing towards the mark and make sure that we push in to get the kingdom. All right. Let's go to um, uh, Sirach 2. Brothers, sisters, as we continue to work for the Most High and put our hand to the plow, let's not get distracted. Let's make sure that we're doing everything we can to make this business a successful and your work, your work not be in vain. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. You see that? If thou come to serve the Lord, to work for the Most High in his business, come on. Prepare thy soul for temptation. You see that? So because what? There's uh, a lot of temptations that's going to happen as you continue to walk down this narrow path to try to get you off course. All right? This is the condition of the battle. We must be endure we must stay strong to make sure that we are worthy to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and with that we say shalom shalom
it so hard to serve God And why would I say that I'm a Jew, it's how odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's how wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.